to optimize what I got. So thank you for taking time out. Tessa, I completely forgot that you're involved with uh, PG&E and the EV1 and trying to come up with a way for people to use EVs in that era. How, how did it go and what happened to that whole program? Started their national their we called the Film Field Program. It began around I know at least by 1990. They were up and running. Um, I well, it was the first person who was head of it was a guy uh, who used to own a Ford dealership, went to Harvard Business School. Very smart guy. Had a lot of so I wound up being a coordinator in for the East Bay um, program, the mm -hmm. East Bay area region. Mm -hmm. And at the time, <coughs> our primary focus was on natural gas vehicles initially, and you know, um, uh, targeting fleet operators, new building stations, um, converting vehicles, and actually running a testing and evaluation program with a company called the Bevelacqua and Associates um, out of the Congress. So we were really at the forefront of testing vehicles um, and monitoring, just basically providing the car companies with feedback. We mm -hmm. worked with Ford, we worked with GM, we worked with Honda. Mm -hmm. Then, I want to say about 94, we started, well, we've always been working on electric vehicles, but a lot of it was testing them and just trying to improve fuel performance because we knew I mean, at the time, electric cars were looking at a 70 mile range mm -hmm. for battery life, and then in the Bay Area, you have to, you know, you could do your commute in the morning, but you'd have to charge up, you know, before you get home. And it was, they were really, we looked at them as not so much a fleet opportunity, but an opportunity for kind of about town air and vehicles. Mm -hmm. Then we went and just partnered with Ford to do an all electric commute. Mm -hmm. Basically, to, 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 to create momentum and interest in the program. Uh, and for an electric vehicle, so we selected a hundred drivers. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do, we had fifty vehicles, hundred drivers. We were going, you know, we had backup drivers. People moved, they changed jobs. That we could, you know, insert into the program. And we would give them electric vehicle. They pay their own. Uh, we pay insurance. They had to, you know, pay, of course for the electricity charge. We'd install a charging um, system at their house, mm -hmm. and we would ch um, install charging um, equipment stations at BART stations. Mm -hmm. And the goal was to have people drive to BART station when their electric vehicle, park the electric vehicle, and set it, put it on the charger, get on a BART, which is run on electricity, and go to work. Mm -hmm. And do the reverse. So we call it the all electric commute because you no, know, because people weren't using any fossil fuel vehicles. So um, I, th I thought the EV one was the only option at that t time. So you're saying Ford had their own EV at that time? Ford had a vehicle. Um, um, Honda actually had a vehicle too. Mm -hmm. we, were testing, we were I mean, we were testing the vehicles. I got to drive the Honda vehicles. I got to drive the Ford, and they were all um, kind of sports goods. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, they, they were all what? I didn't hear what you said. I said they're all really like, you know, sports team small vehicles. Mm -hmm. You didn't see a lot of large electric vehicles at the time because, mm -hmm. you know, battery was an issue. And of course, weight battery. The batteries weighed a lot. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And, you know, it was, we felt at the time that GM just really wasn't making the, I mean, 
they they did it as a feel good as opposed to a this is a long range investment mm-hmm. in the technology. I mean, we had problems with them even with our natural gas vehicles. Mm. We were an interesting point. I don't remember if I don't know if you recall there was a um there was a problem with um, there was a gas vehicle, I mean uh gas company truck that exploded in Minnesota. Mm-hmm. And it was a GM field truck. Mm-hmm. And everybody, they were ready to scrap the program. And so we um, participated with other utilities to figure out what was wrong. That you know, look, we've, we've invested in infrastructure, we've invested in technology, we're not ready to give up. GM was ready, just, we're done. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> so, mm. we, I mean, I literally would have to call. I had fleet operators who would have vehicles with moving repair work, and they would just sit at the GM dealer, I mean, at GM service center in the back waiting for them to work on it because um, with the, um, these were OEM vehicles as opposed to aftermarket conversion. Mm. So you had to have all your maintenance work done by a GM dealership. Mm. And they would just sit there. Wow. And so, you know, I'm, I'd have to call up and say, hey, you know, um, City of Berkeley has a gas, you know, a natural gas truck that's sitting there and they want to know what happened. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they were doing nothing. Wow. T- tell me about, so the, EV, the EV1 obviously is the one everybody knows about that GM crushed. Um, so it looks like Ford and Toyota gave up on their EVs as well. Is that correct? Or Ford and, um, and Honda? Well, here's, here was the big challenge. The big challenge was really creating a charging infrastructure. Mm-hmm. Utilities were doing it, and but how do you create a charging infrastructure for com- um, consumer vehicles? Mm-hmm. You know, we were able to do it for gas, natural gas vehicles, in that case we would compress natural gas, because we were dealing with fleet operators and we had fleet partners that were willing to set up their charging set up charging stations and mm-hmm. build charging stations. So I had hundreds of natural gas vehicles operating in just my service territory. Mm-hmm. At the time and I'll actually send you a copy of the picture mm-hmm. and um, maybe some press old press. We received um, a, um, the East Bay um, clean air um, Clean Air Vehicle Coalition, which um, AG helped launch, we received an award from the Department of Energy mm-hmm. for as a, a, one of, we were one of the first clean city clean city designees because of our work mm-hmm. with natural gas, electric vehicles, and energy efficiency programs. Mm-hmm. So um, there was there was a desire for you know for these, these green technologies, clean technology, especially in California after they passed. Um, uh, the zero emission um, um, like vehicle legislation mm-hmm. where a certain percentage of fleet, uh, fleet vehicles had to be um, zero emission vehicles. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, the state of California was really, um, you know, had, you know, created a, a, a stick, in, you know, whereas, you know, PG was creating care to try to get people to um, commit to these technologies. We gave out incentives. Um, like we built out charging stations. We even partnered with the city of Santa Cruz for their um, their downtown shuttle to run on that on electric on electricity. In that case, um, instead of charging, it was a battery swap out technology, which mm-hmm. was the other option that people were pursuing. Mm-hmm. And that really isn't feasible for a consumer vehicle just because, you know, I go and I drive over a pad and I swap out my battery. Like, you know, is this going to be the same? You know, people are always going to be there. Wait, is this battery at the same level of quality and, you know, battery life that, you know, my battery that I just let you take have? Mm-hmm. So, um, I think people were taking, they, they, um, the car companies knew that 
this was eventually going to happen. People were going to stop start, were going to adopt natural, I mean, electric vehicles. I mean, however, um, they were hesitant to basically invest in retooling factories um, to build natural, I mean, electric vehicles. Mm-hmm. I mean, it wasn't the same if you're talking about a, a natural gas vehicle, even if it's compressed natural gas, it still has a combustion engine. So the tech, the engine um, technology is not much different from a gas, I mean, a fossil fuel, I mean, a natural gas, I mean, a gasoline vehicle. And you're talking about four-stroke combustion process, mm-hmm. as opposed to using a battery, um, and that's totally different operating component, um, totally different type of engine, you know, you know, a motor, not an engine. So, and that was, you know, the problem, because, you know, you have to have, you know, um, you know, um, manufacturing, you have to, you know, invest in manufacturing capacity, um, you know, um, are you going to be able to get the batteries, are you going to, you know, partner with third party. There were all these technology questions that we always knew that the industry would take off with a third party, um, like a Tesla, Mm -hmm. just because they are starting with a clean slate. They're not starting where they have significant investment in another technology and they've got to, you know, they've got to deal with switching costs. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, Tesla started off as So the competitive advantage of Tesla, obviously, are the charging facilities for consumers in a broad range if they're not charging at home, which is one of the items that you mentioned. And obviously, the other one is the range. Um, well, I would say that, um, you know, tax credits and incentives have really helped the industry. Mm-hmm. Uh, and on, in some part, you know, the solar industry, mm-hmm. because a lot of the in, um, the investment in charging infrastructure kind of kind of went almost hand in hand, and with people being open to solar panels and solar technology. Mm-hmm. So you talk about green investment. You talk about um, uh, you talk about ESG, and then you get into these um, mitigation credits where if I invest in this type of, if I put money into these green technologies, I can mitigate my carbon footprint or um, offset. I create these offsets. Mm-hmm. And I can use the tax credits for the offset to fund these projects. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, we've created, I say that the financing mechanism um, had to catch up. The, um, the technology had to catch up to a certain amount, a certain extent. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a whole bunch of things that kind of go into play when you're introducing a new technology like that. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's expensive. Not like. We're, 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 we're limited on time today, so I, I think we're going to definitely do a round two. Uh, I'm just uh, wondering, are there any obvious roadblocks to a Tesla being successful? Are they, are they ma- in your mind, have they managed to beat the odds to make it work? Oh, well, you know, I mean, if you look at the business model, in all honesty, um, it, you know, it started out with one selling cars. <laughs> mm. I mean, they, like, there's all these financial mechanisms and incentives in place that are aiding the industry. Just like if you look at how solar was maybe 15 years ago. Mm-hmm. Solar was heavily subsidized, the lots of tax credits that made it worthwhile, um, that made it cost effective for people to implement solar projects. Mm-hmm. And you're still going to need volume. You need economies of scale to make this work. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, there is always the argument that, you know, the, the green argument hasn't really captured people's minds and you know, the hearts and minds of what people think I and mean, people thought it would just because 
I mean, really, you should consider the fact that you have got to generate, you've got to use fossil fuels in most cases to generate the electricity that you use to charge an electric vehicle. So oh. is this really a, you know, how green is this technology? And of course, there are some efficiency losses in that process. Mm -hmm. uh, but the quest, the, the, the counter argument that we always made with um, at, when I was at PG&E and with the Clean Air Vehicle Program was that that's today. As we go down the pipe, you know, go down the road in the future, there will be greener ways, more cost-effective ways to actually generate electricity. I mean, we were looking at solar. We were looking at wind. So if I am generating my my electricity via solar, sun is pretty clean energy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, those were some, so solar is just a whole host of items. Mm -hmm. So your so your thought was that you you know, the big firms really didn't commit to success with it because their infrastructure was for building, you know, ICE vehicles. So it was just too too challenging for them to open up a new front, you know, in well, early stages. I wouldn't say it was too challenging. It wasn't cost effective. It's not cost effective for me to, why would I spend millions of dollars to build a a, a plant to build electric vehicles and I might sell, you know, where 5% of my sales at best may come from electric, electric vehicles. Mm -hmm. Whereas I could build a plant that I can retool it, I can modify it, I can actually produce other vehicles at that plant. That plant, you know, I can, I can shift my production for, for one model to another model at that facility where I can't really do that if I've got maybe one or two electric vehicles mm -hmm. in my product portfolio. Mm -hmm. So there are all these factors that come in and look at the, you know, the whole production, the value chain, the, the production and how cars are manufactured. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was a big challenge for them. You know, mm -hmm. Why would we do this why would we dedicate all these resources to build one or two vehicles? Mm. And, like I said, however, and, and, you know, innovation is going to happen. It's going to happen in the back. It doesn't happen, you know, it, it just doesn't start off today. It, it happens over time. I can guarantee you that if you go through the ranks of people who work at Tesla Sturgeon, you will probably find people who worked at pg e at some point in time in our senior vehicle program, who worked for Bell Aqua, who worked in all of these entities, for all these entities who were at the forefront doing this in 2000. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it was, you know, people in retrospect that may, have, may say that, you know, you know, all those adjustments didn't make sense. But you're investing in the future, and the technology you create today may not come to fruition and may not really be adopted until maybe a decade or two later. But when you are a, a comp you're not an innovative company, you're not a technology company, you're not talking, I mean, you're not an, a, a, a company that looks at that deals with hyper, you know, hyper competition, hyper innovation, I would you say. You're not motivated to invest in something and say, how do we use this new technology for it? You know, you're just basically cash cow in it. You know, you're, mm. you're focused on creating design, you know, as opposed to technology innovative innovation. Uh, has, has the force of combustion engine really changed that much since the Model T? Mm-hmm. No. You've gotten more, you know, You've gotten more fish in the process, but not really. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah, they're they're not designed. You know, the current uh, firms are not. To, that's an excellent point. They're not innovate innovation oriented at all. Yeah. Being okay. yeah. mm -hmm. well, I think Tesla Tesla wins, um, and Tesla you know Tesla has 
dominated and become this force because they have really applied a high-tech business model Uh to a static industry. Mm. You know, they 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 focus on innovation. They they you know, and they focus on creating a distribution channel. They focus on you know, uh, you know, building out that infrastructure, that charging infrastructure. I drove from Fort Worth, you know, from New Orleans, well, now all the way to Phoenix, and. As I drove through Texas, with the exception of that 300 mile gap that you have between El Paso and, um, and San Antonio, mm-hmm. I could find electric vehicle charging stations. Most truck stops have electric, you know, you can go there and charge your Tesla. Mm-hmm. I found it fascinating. It was like, I pull up and I'm like, hold up, that's an electric charging station. Mm-hmm. So, Things like that need to happen, and the, the pg e we focus on doing that with commercial, you know, commercial fueling stations, and Techwood is focused on, you know, taking really kind of some stuff that we did back in the 90s in terms of building our infrastructure and applied it to commercial situations. But it's taken a lot of capital, it's taken a lot of investment, mm-hmm. and company like GM that's that's accountable shareholders that lives and dies by its earnings performance every every quarter Mm -hmm. isn't going to take that kind of long range view unless Mm. they're forced to do it Mm. okay and that's exactly what's happening unfortunately uh, my the battery's about to drop here but uh, really appreciate the time and you know we'll look through what we've discussed and this is awesome, man. It explains a lot of what's going on right now um, in terms of GM and their lack of progress on this, given that they've been on the side working on it for a long time. You know? Listen, I think GM, because they came out first with a vehicle mm-hmm. and people had such expectations for them, they, they weren't ready to, 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 to try to move in a way that would meet the market's expectations because they just didn't want to do the investment. Whereas you had Ford and you had Honda in the background, just kind of do I mean, being a second mover and in the case of Tesla, third, fourth mover, has its advantages. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because the spotlight's not on you. Mm. Interesting. I mean, for example, you didn't realize that Ford and Honda had vehicles around the same time in the, hmm. in the 90s. I didn't either, yeah. That's yeah, and actually, um, I want to say that Ford did a, um, God, they did a, um, this small little cargo van that yeah, they I remember sell it. in Europe. Mm-hmm. Europe. Mm-hmm. That, they did that as an electric vehicle. Right? That was in the 90s. Mm-hmm. And I was so mad. I wanted one of them. Like, why can't we get those? Why can't we use those? And I was like, look, there's, there's no market for the gas version of that here in America. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, it would be great. But like small businesses, like bakeries and things like that. Mm-hmm. And now I see those vehicles being purchased by small businesses, like, like bakeries and stuff like that. I'm like, see, I knew I was on to something. Definitely, definitely. All right, well, uh, before I get shut off here, thank you again, and we shall chat. Have a great day. All right. I will. Thank All right. you. All right, bye.